uh, have an extensive review on inferences about a mean vector. Okay, so um, I'm going to take you through in the overview today. Uh, we're going to look at uh, review the univariate case, the motivated case, uh, which involved the alternative square, the likelihood ratio test, comparison, and relationship. Now, you know that uh, yesterday, I introduced you to likelihood ratio test, okay? So you're gonna see the difference between uh, using the alternative squared and the likelihood ratio test to figure out, uh, you know, uh, hypothesis, you know, involving several variables in whether one group or more than one group, you're actually gonna see that today, okay? And we're also gonna go through some confidence intervals and you know what? There are different kinds of confidence interval. Uh, if you look at the homework four that I uploaded last night, you're gonna see that I asked you to compute different kind of confidence intervals. So I want to tell you, we got confidence interval uh, regions, we got simultaneous comparison, we got the T-squared interval, we got the Bufferini intervals. Then we're going then what what is the difference between this kind of interval? So today you're actually gonna you know, I'm gonna walk you through all this. Okay. So then lastly we're gonna be talking about the last sample inferences about a population mean vector. And you know what? Uh the the textbook that I'm actually you know extracted this from is more or less the same as the one we've been using. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to a goal, the goal. Of course, we actually, the goal in, 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 any, in any inference, in statistical inference, the goal is just to make a very good decision about the mean population based on the sample. That's what we always do, okay? We actually wanna make a decision about the entire population based on the knowledge of few, okay? And in that situation, we're actually going to consider p-correlated variables, okay? So p-correlated variables have to be analyzed jointly, okay? And of course, that is exactly what we've been doing, okay? Then simultaneous analysis yield stronger tests with better error control. So we realize that um, when we do, this is just uh, actually justifying the essence of multivariate analysis, okay? So as uh, compared to the conventional. Okay, so um, if you look at what I'm showing you right now, uh, every statistical test actually starts with hypothesis formulation, okay? Every statistical test starts with the hypothesis formulation only that in multivariate uh, testing, what we always want to do, since the number of variables is going to be more than one, of course, we're actually going to be testing for mean vectors, okay? That's exactly what we're going to be testing for. And that was why you see that the mu here is a P by one, okay? It's P by one, depending on the number of vectors, okay? And you know what? Uh, when we have p by one, okay, for this guy here, the hypothesized value is also going to be p by one, okay? The hypothesized value is also going to be p by one, okay? Because we're in the real sense, maybe you actually want to test or uh, want to compare, you want to test whether the mean of the height is certain value, the mean of the weight is certain value, the mean of uh, blood pressure, a certain value, stuff like that. So, and that is why they're actually gonna be P by one, okay? Now, and um, I walk you through the univariate case yesterday, which, you know, univariate case, you probably, you know, you've done that before, where you have a population, you take a sample size, and um, you actually wanna test 
if um, uh, the uh, the value of a parameter could take a certain value, okay? Whether the, whether the parameter could take one or two values, okay? So I think I, you are aware of that. And of course, if you want to do that in the univariate case, okay, this is going to be the hypothesis. What I have right here, this is not a vector, okay? This is just, it's not a vector because I only have, I only have one variable, okay? In the univariate test, the focus is on one variable, okay? And under the hypothesis testing, of course, the, the non-hypothesis, you know, we're going to look like this. So this is not a vector. This is a scalar, okay? And this guy here is not also a vector, it's a scalar. Okay, of course, you know, if I'm going to carry out a test like this, I'm actually going to need a test statistic, okay? That's exactly what you've done before. And then depending on the sample size and whether the standard deviation is known, of course, you are actually going to use uh, T distribution, then where you can actually take, uh, get a p-value and then uh, you take decision regarding the non-hypothesis, okay? So you've done that before in, uh, you know, univariate uh, statistics, okay? So this is just uh, typically showing uh, the rejection region, the acceptance region, you know, for situation where this where actually focusing on the small sample size, okay? So the focusing on the small sample size, and that was why the degree of freedom is actually 10, okay? So this is just showing you uh, the rejection area uh, uh, for two theaters, okay? This is a rejection area, anything that fall outside this guy here, okay? So that is actually a rejection area, okay? And what are we actually going to be rejecting? We're actually going to be rejecting the non-hypothesis. Okay, and you know that when we have something like that, we also have the corresponding confidence interval, okay? We have the corresponding confidence interval. And of course, the essence of confidence interval is just that, okay, uh, uh, is to be able to induce, uh, to introduce what we call the margin of error, because a single value of an result could be wrong or right. And to be at the safer side in research, we actually need to consider the margin of error as well, so that the true value of the parameter we're looking for, we actually lies in the interval with associated degree of confidence, okay? So I think you've done that before, okay? And when you take a look at what I have here, I think I show you uh, yesterday and I also show you last week, where how can we actually uh, derive a motivated test from the univariate test. Of course, you know that uh, looking at the test statistic uh, to figure out the univariate test, you're going to see that this is what we have. Okay, so when I square both sides, because you have been, you have been, uh, you've had about hotelin t square that we've been doing, right? So it's just like if I if I square both sides, what is going to happen? So squaring this you know, will enable us to derive the multivariate version, okay? And that's exactly what we're trying to do right here. When it's just like, we square the both side of that, this is what we have, and we're actually gonna write this in matrix form, okay? Write it in matrix form to be able to suit the multivariate case. So, and you know, this guy here is the one that is broken down into this and this, okay? We are one of them is actually gonna be a transpose, okay? And this guy here is the one here, okay? And the hand here is actually here, okay? So this is what I'm actually gonna use if I want to compute a T square, okay? For the motivated case, okay? So, and in the hand, of course, you're actually gonna have something like this, okay? Which is gonna follow F distribution. Now, in the general case, uh, this is actually gonna be the formula. So what I'm trying to tell you right now, this particular formula here is more or less like a generalization of the univariate test. In case, uh, in case uh, maybe you are bothering to know how do how do we arrive at a t squared? Okay, we actually arrive at a t squared by generalizing the conventional univariate test. 
okay so in a multivariate case now this is going to be a test statistic okay so only that uh what i have here is actually going to be the difference between the mean okay and the hypothesized value you know when i say hypothesized value i'm actually referring to the the value you know the the mean vector that you actually have in the hypothesis in the non hypothesis but this guy here is actually going to be the mean uh, the, the the vector of the sample mean okay the vector of the sample mean okay so i think you can see that now so uh which means uh, you're actually going to be presented with a uh, data set, okay? When you are presented with data set, okay, uh, there's going to be more than one variable in the data set, okay? In such a way that if you want to test an hypothesis, uh, hypoth uh, hypothesis in a multivariate case, of course, you need to first of course, compute the mean of each of the variable using the formula right here. So I'm trying to tell you uh, my sample mean vector here is actually going to be p by one as well. Okay, it's actually going to be p by one because the hypothesized value that we're also going to be focusing on is also going to be p by one. Okay, and that, look at that. This is the hypothesized value now right here. Okay, it's also going to be p by one. Then the variance covariance because I need to compute my variance covariance. Okay. Uh, after computing my variance covariance, then I now, now find the inverse. That is what I put right here. So how do I get my variance covariance? My variance covariance should be p by p. It should be a square matrix. Okay? It should be p by p. So of course, you know the formula to use if you really actually want to figure that out. Okay? So, um, and then if you look at the, the distribution, the sample distribution of t squared, because if I ask you in exam, if I ask uh, some of the question, even in the homework four, like here, look at this. What is the sampling distribution of T squared? This is what I'm expected to write, okay? The sampling distribution of T squared is this, okay? This is a sampling distribution of T squared. Now, what do I mean by sample distribution of T squared? It's just that if I figure how T squared, okay? How can I get a critical value of T squared? Uh, I will be able to get a critical value of t squared if I know the distribution of t squared. And that is why distribution is very, very important. Okay? Now, uh, it means that if I'm testing now, if I'm carrying out a multivariate test on the vector mean, okay, where what I have here is a p by 1, and what I also have here is a p by 1, and this is an hypothesized values of this. When I say I put the side value of this, you're like, this is a zoom values of this. Because that's what we're testing. Okay? And you know what? We're actually going to assume that the observations, okay? When I say observation, okay? You know, the random variable, the x1, the x2, uh, you know, up to xp have to come from a multivariate normal distribution. Okay? And this is the, this was one of the reasons why on last Friday, we were trying to carry out you know, uh, a test on uh, multivariate normality, okay? Because uh, the only condition to carry out uh, a multivariate test of means is uh, the condition is that uh, the underlying assumption is that uh, the variables have to be jointly normally distributed, okay? So, and that is why we're testing. We got a way to test that, and that was why I was trying to show you the other time. So, because we are assuming that the observations are random sample from a multivariate normal distribution, with this as a mean vector and this guy here as a variance covariance. Okay? You know, some of you may be wondering what is the difference between this guy here and I'm going to show you something right now and this guy here. Okay? Now, let me tell you something. This guy here, this guy here is the one that you are dividing by n. You remember I told you the other time, there are times where you want to do variance covariance, okay? When you want to compute element in the variance covariance, you don't, if you don't, if you divide, the one you divide by n, okay, is this guy here. But when you want to do sample variance covariance, 
this is a sample variance covariance okay for the sample variance covariance it's actually going to divide by n minus one i'm going to repeat myself again okay for this guy here this guy is called a sample variance covariance okay then uh you're going to divide this entity the sum of square uh, products you're actually going to divide by n minus one but you know what if i ask you to obtain this guy here okay when i ask you to obtain this guy, this guy here i'm actually assuming that the cross product is divided by n because this guy here is an attribute of a population okay it's an attribute of a population and as you can see here this is a normal distribution and what we normally define you know on normal distributions are parameters okay this is a parameter this is also parameter so this guy here is a cross product divided by n but the sample variance covariance is divided by n minus one so what you actually need in the case of if in obtaining alternative squared uh, of course you need to get a sample variance covariance you need to get x before you find the inverse of that okay that's exactly what you're going to do okay so just to be able to tell you there's a difference between the two okay now moving up again uh like i said uh focusing on the hotel in squared this is the distribution when i ask you to state the distribution because i can ask you that in exam or in the assignment or in whatever so when i say distribution of t squared this is exactly what i mean okay the distribution of t squared uh is you know t squared is distributed as n minus one p divided by n minus p times f p n minus p okay this f here is f distribution okay so t distribution uh, t squared is actually distributed as that okay and you know what uh we can actually compute t squared and compare it to this okay and that was why i was trying to tell you the other time that okay when you are carrying out the test okay when you compute your t squared using the formula that i showed before okay this is the one that you're actually going to use to get the critical value okay because you actually want to compare your t squared with the critical value for you to take a decision okay and let me tell you something we got several ways that we can use to take a decision regarding the hypothesis testing okay if i were to test this hypothesis right here okay i can actually compute when i compute my t square uh, using this formula okay this is a test statistic from our uh, value this is going to give you a test statistic value okay for the t square okay if i want to get a critical value okay what i'm going to use for the critical value is actually going to be uh, this guy here okay what i'm going to use for the critical value is going to be this guy here okay so it, then what i'm actually going to be doing is to, is to be able to compare the t square here with this guy with this guy here okay this is a critical value this is a test statistic value okay when this guy is greater than this guy then we're actually going to reject the non-hypothesis okay i'm going to say that again when the when the test statistic value that is the t square value here is greater than the critical value okay we're actually going to reject okay and another way to do that okay if you can find the p value associated with the text okay this is the p value associated with the text okay and when the p value associated with the text is very very small compared to the level of significance then you're actually going to reject the non hypothesis okay you actually so which means the only uh, when the p value is small then it means you have a very large value of a t squared okay for t for p value to be small it means you have a very large value of a t squared okay and don't forget before don't forget that when t square value is larger than the critical value you're actually going to reject when t square here is larger than the critical value you're actually going to reject and when t square is large the p value is actually going to be small and you know what we for us to be able to have a significance the p value has to be very very small okay compared to the level of significance okay now all what i've been doing i actually want to demonstrate that with an example okay i want you i want to, want to demonstrate that with an example can you guys can you guys see 
uh, a really a really little example right now. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Okay. Just trying to confirm if you guys are seeing that. Okay, so um, I want you to take a look at what I have right here. I want to consider a situation whereby uh, we got we got uh, three experimental units, okay, and we're focusing on two variables, okay. Please take note of that. Of course, this is a multivariate setting, and then particularly uh, that area of multivariate, you know, when you have two variables is what we call bivariate, okay? Now, this is our data heads, okay? You know, I told you last week, your, your X, your X matrix is actually going to be your data set, the way your data set look. That is your X matrix, okay? So my X matrix, what I'm trying to say right now is that, okay, this is going to be my X1, and this guy here is going to be my X2, okay? Can you see that now? This C10, 8, this is my X1, and this is my X2, okay? This is from the data set, okay? Now, take a look at what I have right here. Uh, this is an hypothesis that I actually want to test. What am I testing right here? I'm trying to test whether the true mean of this guy here, of this variable here, is 9. And I'm also testing at the same time whether the true mean of this variable here is 5. Can you see that now? So that is a vector. So this is the hypothesis values that I talked about the other time, okay? So you can be given a set of data like this and I ask you to carry out a test, okay? Uh, of course, the alternative, if I want to write the alternative version of this particular test right now, I'm actually gonna write HA dot mu not equal to this, okay? And that's exactly what I'm going to write under the hypothesis, okay? That's exactly what I'm going to write under the alternative hypothesis, okay? Now, if you want to do that now, you actually need to uh, conduct, uh, you need to follow the procedure, uh, you need to get a T-squared, okay? And you know what? Before you can get a T-squared, okay, you actually need to follow, first get the mean, the sample mean, okay? How do I get the sample mean here? Oh, six plus. And you know what? I always wanted to show your work. For, you know, I've graded homework too. For those of you who score less than 10, I put a post assignment comment. Okay? So some of you, I will need you to be showing your work. Okay? You're showing your work, particularly if when I give you something like this, when I give you a data set like this, this is not much. You don't need to use, um, you don't need to use R here. Okay? You don't need to use, uh, even when you use R, you can just use R to confirm your results. Of course, you can actually find, even if you even if you use R, let me tell you this, even if you use R or you use calculator or whatever, oh, okay, let me say this, even if you use R, you actually need to uh, write the formula out. For instance, I want to find the sample mean, okay? I need to for first write, okay, submission X divided by N. Okay, now I'm going to say submission x1 divided by n because this is x1. So when I do that, I'm going to write 6 plus 10 plus 8 divided by 3. And that is going to give me the 8 right here. Okay, that's actually going to give you the 8 right there. Okay, so when I, when I add 9 to 6 to 3 and divided by 3, and that's going to give me the 6 right here. Now, if I have that, that this is actually going to be my uh, uh, sample mean vector, okay? I got a sample mean vector, okay? You know, uh, uh, the initially it's supposed to be eight, six column. It's, gonna be, it's supposed to be a column, right? But uh, you can see the transpose right here, right? So that is why you are having a row vector, okay? Initially, this guy here uh, was a column vector. Can you see now? Then we write, try to write that as a row vector, you can see what I have right now. So what I'm trying to say now is that, okay, this is what we got for the mean, sample, the mean from the data for the X1. This is the hypothesized value of that. For X2, this is what we got as a mean for the, from the data. But this is the hypothesized value for that, 
okay? Uh, the next thing I'm actually gonna do right now is to be able to get my variance, covariance. Like I said, uh, this is my sample mid vector, okay? This is my variance, covariance. How do I get this, okay? Do you know that if I actually want to get this guy now, I need to, this is a variance of X1. This is a variance of X2. This is a variance covariance. Of course, I've walked you to how to get that before. You're actually going to get that from this data set. So if I were you, make sure, uh, you can work on that to be able to see whether using the data set right here, whether you can actually uh, obtain that. Okay, do you get that now? Okay, so uh, at the moment you get this guy here, then the next thing you need to do is to find the inverse. Okay, this is a two by two. Okay, I think I'll show you how to find the inverse right here because we need the inverse. After getting the inverse, then we can go into the orthelinity square. Now, look at the orthelinity square right now. This is a formula. Okay, uh, if you take a look at this guy here, this is a formula. What is N? The N is the number of the experimental unit, which is three. Okay, now, you know what I'm trying to do right here? I'm actually going to be subtracting the mean, the sample mean from the corresponding hypothesized value. Okay, subtracting you know, eight minus nine, six minus five. Why do I have to do that? You come and take a look at that. Okay, look at that, eight here, minus nine, then six minus five. Why am I doing that? Because this is the sample mean of the X1. Okay, and this is the hypothesized value for the X1. This is the sample mean for the X2. This is the hypothesized value for the X2, okay? The hypothesized uh, value of the mean for the X2, okay? Now, and that is why we are, you know, I try to show you clearly, okay? This is how I want you guys to do that. When I give you something like this, this is the way I want you to work, you, uh, to work it out, okay? It is only when I give you a large volume of data set. It is only when I give you a large volume of data set that you can actually uh, use uh, uh, maybe R, you get what I mean, okay? So, and that is exactly what I'm doing right here. And at the end of the day, the T squared gives me seven over nine, okay? And when I get my T squared, uh, is, there, is there anyone who have a trouble time getting, who doesn't understand how to figure out what I'm doing right here? Is there anyone? Uh, I think, can, can you guys, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. So that is how, so the next thing now is just to figure out the critical value. Okay. I want to figure out the critical value. And if I want to figure out the critical value, I, I need to know what is my alpha. Okay. And uh, I need to check under F. Okay. Uh, of course, if you look at what I have here, it's just that I have n minus one. I'm going to show you right now. Look at that, the n minus one. I think you can see that now. And the n minus p, okay? So uh, n minus p is going to be three minus two. That's why you have one here. If I check this one from the F table, this is what I have, okay? And when I have this guy here, I'm actually going to use that to multiply this, the L of this, look at that. And that actually give me a critical value of this, okay? When I have a critical value of this now, then the next thing I'm actually gonna do is to compare the T square value, the test, the T square test statistic value with a critical value, okay? That's exactly what I'm gonna do, okay? And of course, in that case, you can see that it, that is so small, right? Look at that, the T square is so small. Seven over nine, the test statistic value is actually smaller than 798.04. And because of that, we, we will fail to reject the non-hypothesis, okay? We are, non-rejecting non-hypothesis actually means that uh, we, uh, we actually mean that this is true. Actually mean that this guy is true, okay? It's actually mean that this is true, okay? So this is, we, have, we fail to reject this, okay? On that uh, 0 0.05 level of significance. And uh, there's another example right here, okay? Uh, and this example is taken from Morrison 1919, um, Motivated Statistical Method, okay? Now, uh, 
there are two variables, uh, VABA and performance score for 101 elderly subjects, age 60 to 64, okay? On the Wexler Adult Intelligence Test, okay? Now, assuming that the data are from a bivariate normal distribution, okay, with unknown mean vector, mu, okay? And unknown variance covariance matrix, okay? Now, if you take a look at the hypothesized value, okay, we got this. We are testing this against this, okay? And when you have that, they, they've been able to compute the mean, the sample mean, just like what I showed you before, and the sample variance covariance, okay? Please uh, always know that the covariance will always gonna be the same, okay? This guy here is gonna be the same thing as this guy here, okay? And of course, these are the variances, okay? So of course, based on the information that I have right now, I can actually compute my Otelinti squared, okay? Can compute my Otelinti squared, okay? Now, this is the variance, uh, the inverse of the variance, covariance, okay? Because if an examiner should give you something like this, if examiner should give you this, an examiner even provided you with this and this, examiner can ask you to test, okay? This hypothesis. Okay, all, you, all what you need to do is just for you to find the inverse of that and for you to be able to compute your Otelinti square using the formula. You can see, that's what I show you here. This is the test statistic value, you know, for the Otelinti square. Can you see that now? Okay, and the next thing now is just for you to figure out the, uh, the, the you know, the critical value. Okay, you need to figure out the critical value. Okay, and if you want to figure out the critical value, of course, uh, you uh, you know what to use. You know what I showed you before is actually uh, what you're going to use. So that and that will enable you to compare your results. Okay, like in this case now, uh, what we're doing right now, we realize that uh, the critical value is uh, actually higher than, you know, higher than this. Okay, now when the critical value is higher than you know, it's very high, then we are actually going to uh, reject the non-hypothesis. But there's one big question. When we are rejecting the non-hypothesis, was the non-hypothesis rejected because of the VABA score or the performance score or both? Now take a look at this. That is what we're testing right here, we're testing the two at the same time, okay? We are testing the two at the same time. Okay, and let me tell you something. Okay, for the two to be true, you know, for this to be true, okay, this has to be true, this also has to be true. Okay, for this to be true. So for this to be true, it means that this is not, uh, you know, uh, like I said, if this is true and this is not true, okay, then this can be true. Okay, so for this to be true, for the non-hypothesis to be true, you know, the two have to be true at the same time. So what the test is actually suggesting is that we are testing the two collectively. Okay, we are testing it collectively. We are testing both the VABA score and the performance score because we got a way to test each of that, you know, under univariate condition. Okay, and that is the reason why I put that question. Okay, uh, I'm not going to, now, uh, I put something here just for you to be able because to know about distribution. Because if you look at assignment four, okay, if, if you're giving something like this and somebody say, what is the distribution of this? Now, what I needed to write, oh, this is the distribution, okay? This is gonna be the distribution, okay? So please watch out our uh, homework four. I asked some question about the distribution of something. Okay, like if I if if I ask about this guy here, this is the distribution. Okay, I just put that. And you know what? If I also ask about the distribution of this, n minus one s squared, then the distribution is actually going to follow. It's going to follow a chi squared. Okay, and this guy here is the same thing as this guy here. Why? Because the s squared, which is the variance, is this guy divided by n minus one. Okay, so the distribution of this guy is the same thing as the distribution of this guy, and which which and this is the distribution that we're talking about. 
if I ask you to write the distribution of this guy here or this guy here, this is what you're going to write for me. Okay? This is what you're going to write for me. Okay? And if I ask you to write the distribution of this guy here, okay? Summation xij minus x by all squared divided by sigma squared. If I ask you to write the distribution of this guy here, this is what you're going to write for me. Okay? Please take note. I have a couple of these questions in homework 4. Okay, so uh, you don't need this one. You don't need this one. I think I've explained that. Okay, I yesterday I talked about Wishart. Okay, I can ask you to I can ask you about the distribution of n minus one x. Now somebody will say that what is the difference between this n minus one s? The x here is a variance covariance. Okay, now I'm going. There's something I'm going to show you right now. You know, I just wanted to see the difference between the two. Now look at this. N minus one S squared. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about this one. This guy here is a variance in univariate. The distribution of this guy here is this, okay? The distribution of this guy is chi, is a sigma squared chi squared. Can you see that now? But when I write n minus one and if and in uppercase x, I'm gonna show you now. When I write n minus one and the uppercase x, I'm gonna show you. Take a look at this. N minus one uppercase s means variance covariance. Okay? The distribution of this is we shot. I told you yesterday. The distribution of this is we shot. Please take note of that. I asked a couple of questions uh, in the homework four about what is the distribution of this, what is the distribution of that. And let me tell you something. Uh, 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 the reason why you need to know the distribution of that is because if you are carrying out hypothesis testing, okay, you need the distribution of the test statistics to be able to figure out the p-value. I'm going to say that again. Why do I need a sampling distribution of the test statistic? I need a sampling distribution of the test statistic uh, to be able to figure out the p-value associated with that. Because you know we need to def we need to decide on the you know we need it, we need a uh, p-value to decide on whether we are actually going to reject the non hypothesis or we are not going to reject that. And that is why you actually need to know the distribution. Uh, you don't need to worry about this one. Okay, so uh, I quickly want to take you to likelihood ratio. You know, I started a likelihood ratio yesterday. So what I just finished with you right now is just how do we use Otelin T squared, okay, to figure out a multivariate test, okay? That is what we just, but we have another way to do that. And that was what I was walking you through yesterday. So another way to do that is a likelihood ratio Okay, likelihood ratio is another way to do that. But let me tell you something. In the likelihood ratio, we, you know, if we are actually going to be comparing two variance covariance. Likelihood ratio is more or less like a test of covariances. Okay, it's more or less like a test of equality of covariances. Okay, now take a look at this. Uh, it is equivalent to a T squared because we also used to figure out the test like this, or to even figure out, you know, uh, a test like this. Let me tell you, what is the difference between this guy here and this guy here? Okay, this guy here is the one that, has, that happens to do with the two population. Okay, if I collect two variables from patients that have COVID-19, and I collect two variables from patients that, that do not have COVID-19, Okay, maybe the two variables that can, that can collect from this group, maybe the two variables are maybe the uh, blood pressure and the uh, weight. And I also collect the same blood pressure and weight from the other group. Of course, in that situation, I actually want to test for the uh, equality of vector mean in the two population. Okay, equality of vector means in the two, in two populations. Okay, we can also do that uh, using the likelihood ratio test. And we can also do that using the Otelinti square. 
okay? I'm actually going to show you how you can do that using the Otelinti square, okay? Now, uh, and that was why I said it is a more general than T squared in that it can be used to test other hypotheses, uh, you know, regarding the, the variance covariance. So, like I said, as we are testing the equality of vector means, we can also test the equality of the variance covariance. Okay, if I have variance covariance from two different population, okay, I can test the equality of that. Not only that, if I have, if, if, I, if I compute a variance covariance uh, that is based on hypothesized value of the mean, okay, and I compare with another variance covariance that is based on the sample mean, okay, I can, look, I can actually use the likelihood ratio test to be able to test for the equality, okay, so we can do that as well, okay. Uh, so another thing I want you to know is that T-squared and the likelihood ratio tests are based on different underlying principles, okay? Which I'm actually gonna walk you through that, okay? Uh, you don't need to be worried about, I'm actually gonna go into the general. Now, yesterday, I think I showed you that it's actually gonna be the ratio of two likelihood, okay? Uh, so uh, I think I showed you that yesterday, but what I just wanna do today is to show you the data. Now take a look at what I have right here. This is what I showed you yesterday. This guy here is what we call lambda, lambda. We call it lambda, okay? So this guy here is a ratio of two likelihood, okay? Uh, the likelihood that, uh, you know, this is like, okay, the variance covariance that I obtain that is based on the hypothesized value. You know, and this is the variance covariance that I obtain, the one that is based on the sample mean, okay? And I'm gonna find the determinant of that, so each of that, okay? So you can remember yesterday, I, I show you something like this, right? I show you something like this yesterday. Now, when I ask you to find the lambda, the lambda is a ratio, is a likelihood ratio. What is this guy here? This guy here is the variance covariance, this is a formula. If you look at this variance covariance right here, is the one that is based on the X bar. Now, please, I want to tell you something right now. What is this? Can somebody confirm this to me? What is this guy here? I, I, I guess, hear me? Yes. Okay, this is N. This is not N minus one because I'm not dealing with a sample variance covariance. I told you, anytime I'm dealing with this, this is a population variance covariance. Anytime you see a symbol like this, it means a population variance covariance, okay? And when I have a population variance covariance, uh, the, uh, I'm actually gonna use the cost, you know, the, the sum of square cost product will be divided by N. I think I told you before. Now, uh, look at the, if you look at the one here, the one I have uh, not, okay? is the one that is computed using the hypothesized value of the mean, okay? So to tell you, this guy here is different from this guy here, okay? And I'm actually gonna find the determinant of each of that before I do the ratio. So I'm actually gonna walk you through that, okay? So you can see that now? So this is, and it is called the ratio of two generalized sample variances. Do you guys remember the other time when I gave you the mean time one, and I asked you to find the generalized variance, okay? Now, the, the lambda is the ratio of, of two generalized variance. Okay, look at it, look at this one. What, do I, what is the meaning of a generalized variance? What do you need to do? You need to find the determinant of the variance covariance, okay? So if I find it, I get a generalized variance here, I get another generalized variance here. The generalized variance that I'm actually going to get here is the one that is based on the sample mean. The generalized variance that I'm actually going to get here is going to be the one that is based on the hypothesized value of the mean vector, okay? So uh, each of these are generalized variance. And that was the reason why we said the lambda here is a ratio of two generalized sample variance, okay? Now, uh, when you have that now, and the question is, after getting the lambda, okay, after, after obtaining this lambda, so when you get this guy here, you have to raise it to uh, power of n over two, 
Of course, you know your sample size, right? Now, after getting the lambda, what are you going to do? Okay, after getting the lambda, what are you what you're going to do? You're actually going to uh, take the log of the lambda. Okay, you take the log of the lambda and you multiply by minus two. Okay, this is going to be a test statistic. This is a test statistic we're actually going to use for the likelihood ratio test. Okay, and then you know what? The distribution of the test statistic is approximately, you know, is approximately chi squared. Okay, it means if I want to take a decision regarding this, I need to compare this guy with this guy. Okay, in the testing of hypothesis. Now, let me say that again. Uh, uh, this is a test statistic, but before you can get this test statistic, you actually need to for first obtain what I have right here. Okay, you need to obtain what I have right here. So after getting the lambda, and you know what I told you before, the determinant of the variance covariance matrix must not be zero. The moment it is zero, then you cannot obtain lambda. Okay, so I told you before. Okay, so you know wiki lambda now, and you know the so like I said, the like the likelihood ratio statistic, you know, is this. This is a test statistic. Okay, so this is a test statistic, and this is a critical value. We're going to use this for critical value. When I ask you about the distribution of this, what is the distribution of this? It is this guy here. Okay. The distribution of this is this guy here, okay? When I have this as my test statistic uh, or formula now, then I'm actually going to use this to compare that with this, okay? Now, if that is what I have, there's something I'm going to show you right now. I quickly want to go to the data set, okay? And I want to use a false psychological test, okay? Can you guys see my example right now? Yes. Okay. Look at the example right here. The sample size equal to 64. I got four variables. This is a sample mean vector. This is a variance covariance. Okay. The variance covariance given here is the one that we obtain, you know, uh, uh, using this formula right here. I'm going to show you. It's the one that we obtain. It's the one that is based on the sample mean. I'm going to show you right now. Look at that. Look at this formula right here. The one that is based on the sample mean, okay? The one that is based on the sample mean is the one that is given, right? It's the one that is given, okay? So it's this guy here. So what you have here is the one that is based on the sample mean. But you know what? What you have here is the one that is based on the hypothesized value, okay? Look at the hypothesized value that you are testing, okay? The hypothesized value, to, for you to be able to get this, okay? you actually need to use X. You're actually gonna do X minus the mean, okay, to be able to get this. The transpose of the mean, look at the trans, look, look at that, okay? So for you to be able to get this. Now, if I, if I give you this and I give you this, okay? This is a sample variance covariance that is based on the, on, I mean on the mean. This is the variance covariance that is based on the sample mean and this is the variance covariance that is based on the hypothesized value. So you can see I got two variance covariance. What am I going to do for to get wiki lambda? I need to find the uh, determinant of this. Determinant of this is this. Of course, you can use your calculator. You can use your R software. I don't expect you to do this manually, okay? Because it's going to take forever. Because this is four by four, okay? So determinant of this is this, okay? And determinant of this guy is this guy here, okay? The moment I get it two, I will be able to get my lambda, okay? The lambda is just gonna be the ratio of the two. Look at that. Uh, what I got right here, this guy here, okay? Divided by this guy here, then everything raised to power n over two. You remember my n over two, the formula? I'm gonna show you again to be able to see what I'm talking about. Can you see that? N over two. This is what I'm computing right now. So the ratio of the two raised to power N over two. And our data set here is 64. I'm going to show you, you can see the data set is 64. So with that, I will be able to obtain my wiki lambda. So when I obtain this one, this is the value that I have, okay? Then after getting that, what did I ask you to do? You take the log of that and you multiply by minus two, 
okay? This is going to be your test statistic value now, okay? Then, well, I now need to uh, check under a chi-square with a degree of freedom four, okay? Because why am I checking under the degree of four? You know, four here is the number of uh, variables, okay? And when I check it, I'm going to realize that this guy here is going to be greater than this. Well, and if this guy is greater than this, it means the p-value is going to be small, very, very small. And that will, uh, that will enable me to reject the non-hypothesis, okay? You see that now? Uh, I'm actually going to stop here today. Is there any one of you uh, who has a question on how to figure out the wiki lambda, the likelihood ratio test? Is there anyone? Uh, professor, I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. So is this lambda we calculate, uh, is this based on the deviation matrix? Uh, you mean the lambda? Yeah, yeah. The lambda here, the lambda here is the ratio of the determinant, is the ratio of the determinant of two variance covariance structure. Now, take a look at this. This is a variance covariance structure that is based on sample mean. Okay. And this is a variance covariance structure that is based on the hypothesized value. I told you that you're going to have two variance covariance structure. One, one that is based on the sample mean and the one that is based on the hypothesized value of the vector mean, okay? So you, you, you find the generalized inverse here. You also find the generalized inverse here, which is the determinant. The determinant of this is this. The determinant of this guy is this. And I told you, if you want to use a likelihood ratio test, you want to figure out wiki lambda, this is the formula. I'm going to show you, the, look at the formula right here. You want to figure out wiki lambda, this is the formula. So the formula is the ratio of the determinant, determinant of the variance covariance matrix that, that is based on the sample mean and the determinant of the variance covariance matrix that is based on the hypothesized value, okay? So when you do that, you're gonna raise that to n raised to power two, and that will give you what I have right here. I'm gonna show you now. That is gonna give you this guy here. When you do that, look at that now. This is what I have. The, have I answered your question now? Uh, yes, so I guess um, I was wondering like whether the, lamb, uh, the variance covariance matrix, are they based on the deviation? Matrix? Yeah. They are based on the deviation. You know, any variance covariance matrix are there are based on deviation. Okay. So only that uh, we got two types of deviation. Right here, the variance covariance right here is a deviation around the sample mean. Oh, that vector. makes sense. Okay. But yes. the variance covariance right here is a variation around the hypothesized value of the of the vector mean. And that is why look at the look at the formula here. Can you see that now? Yeah. We are subtracting that. So does that make sense to you now? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Because I'm actually going to give you something like this in exam, and I ask you to figure out uh, wiki lambda. Now, you know what? Do you know I also want to, there's something I want you to, to try. If this is not an assignment. You can just try that. Okay. Using the data set that I have right here. Okay. You know, uh, can you do hotelinty squared? Do hotelinty squared. And compare your results with, uh, with with the decision that we have taken here, okay? Using the using the likelihood ratio. You know, if you want to if you want to try the Otelinti squared, you don't need this guy here, okay? You only need this guy here for the Otelinti squared. You only need this guy here, okay? And you know you need to find the inverse of this guy here. You know that, okay? And let me quickly take you through. Let me show you the formula you're going to use if you want to do the Otelinti squared. So you can compare the two results and see whether, well, compare with two approach, approaches and, con, and see whether they're going to take the same decision. Okay, now look, look at the formula here for the Otelinti squared. Okay, if you use this formula here for that one, what is going to happen? Are you going to take the same decision with the likelihood ratio test? Okay, so uh, I'm going to take last question before I go today because we, you can read up the material. It's a very good material because it's contained a lot of example. And that's why I'm trying to, I'm still gonna continue with this material uh, tomorrow and some other stuff. So is there any one of you uh, who wanna ask question now before I go? Okay, uh, let me use this opportunity to thank everyone for attending my lecture today, like I said. 
uh, your meet and one will be released today. Yeah, I was grading that yesterday and I had a technical issue, but uh, that has been fixed right uh, now. And you know what, your homework one and two have been graded, okay? Uh, uh, I'm gonna be grading homework three as well. Uh, homework four is already uploaded and I'm gonna have my office hour by 12.30 today. Uh oh, sorry, uh, not today, today is Tuesday. Uh, I'm gonna have my office hour on Wednesday by 12.30, okay? So thank you so much for attending my lecture. Uh, make sure you stay safe and do have a good day. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. See you tomorrow. Yeah, see you tomorrow.